Let's give example four a try. Uh, sorry for any background noise you might hear. Uh, it seems like they're doing some sort of socially distanced calisthenics at, uh, or like body weight exercises out on the playground. So uh, anyway, hopefully this video can also get on YouTube. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to be able to share it with you. Anyway, okay, so example four. Uh, students in year eight are asked what day of the week their birthdays are on this year. Uh, the table shows the results. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So there's 12 students had their birthday on a Sunday, 14 had it on a Monday, 18 on a Tuesday, etc. Write down the table of expected values. So these, this table here that we can see, uh, these are our observed values. Okay, so in order to carry out any sort of test, we're, we're basically going to be testing the probability. So linking this to other thinking um, as we move on. Um, but we're going to have a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, of Friday, and then Saturday. So that's the day. But then we want to work out the expected. So if these things were happening completely randomly, um, how likely is it that they would happen on these particular days? So it says, uh, given that each, each is equally likely, um, it tells us that there are 12 add 14 add 18. Sorry, we should be adding this up as we go. Um, 12 plus 18 plus 14 plus 17 plus 15 and 15 is 30 plus 14. So that tells us there were 105 days in total. So it's 105, um, and we're going to divide that by 7. By 7, that gives us 15. So we would expect that there should be 15 birthdays on Sunday, 15 on Monday, etc., etc., etc. So we're just finding, we're just averaging it out, okay, making it nice and fair. Okay, then it says conduct a chi-squared goodness of fit test at the 5% significance level of this data. So the bits that we're interested in are this bit, okay? So it says 5% significance level. And then reading a little bit on, it says the critical value as well. Okay, so we've got our observed frequency and we've got our expected frequency. It's a not a chi-square test of independence, so we're not introducing a matrix. We're doing a goodness of fit. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to type this into a list and spreadsheet, okay? Um, so our observed data can go into the first column. Uh, 17, 15, 15, and 14. If you want to label uh, your column, you can. Uh, that's good practice to get into. Um, 15. But for this, uh, I'm just going to do the processing. So that tells us now that we've got um, both columns, everything's matched up. So we need to do a chi squared goodness of fit test. So we go to menu, statistics, statistical test. Remember, if we're doing an independence, that would be the two-way, but we've got this GOF, G-O-F, goodness of fit. Then it says, right, where did you put your observed data? Well, we put that in A column. Obviously, I didn't name my column, so I haven't got anything in the drop-down list. Uh, where's my expected values? Well, I've had to calculate those, and that's in the second column, and we want our first result column to be in C. Let's click OK. Uh, field 3, sorry, degrees of freedom. Obviously, degrees of freedom. Um, the degrees of freedom is the number of pieces of data that we've got, 7 minus 1, 6. There are 6 degrees of freedom in this. Let's hit OK. And then it gives us some values here. So it says in B, it says our chi-squared calculated value, calc, is 1.6. And it says the p-value is 0.953 to 3 significant figures. Okay. So now we've got two values to go at. Um, just checking that the degrees of freedom is six, that's absolutely fine. Um, let's eliminate this bit. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this because we don't really need this. Now we're on to part C, which is usually the hardest bit. Right, so part C, uh, what we're going to need is I'm going to draw the chi-square distribution or a, a representation. Okay, so it's going to have something like this, and this is going to be our chi-squared. In the question, it gave us the critical value. The critical value is 12.592. Or the 5% significance says this area is 0 0.05. So we've got two ways to go at this. Right, first of all, I'm going to use the, critical, the calculated value and compare it to the critical. If this is our scale, and this is 0 to 12.5, 1, uh, 1. 1.6 is going to be around here somewhere. 
So we are in the do not reject page zero area. Okay. Um, so the data, uh, we, we should be able to say that our we haven't actually written a null hypothesis for this, have we? Uh, which we probably should have done. Um, so it says that these, these numbers are absolutely within the range of values that we would expect. Okay. Um, the other one we could do is, I'll shade it in green, it's saying the probability value of this happening is 0 0.95. So the area under the curve, and I'm just, I'll draw the green line in, 0 0.9. So it's saying that this area under the curve is 0 0.953 likelihood of happening. So again, we are firmly, the green line is way to the left of the black line, which is our critical value or the line at which we have 0 0.5. So it's way to the left again. So we do not reject. So C, do not reject. Reject H0. Or you can say accept H0. But it says write down the conclusion for the test, but we need to give a reason. Accept H0. Chi-squared calculated is less than chi-squared crit which is perfectly acceptable, or 0 point, sorry, uh, 1.6, 1.6 is less than 12.59, um, or we could say that the p-val of uh, 0.953 is greater than p-val of 0.05. So you must give a judgment, but you must also give a reason. So the difference is that this is going to fit and we're using our GDC and list and spreadsheets, but it's comparing against the same distribution. 